Beginner's Guide to Using Heat on Your Beard. Now, I don't actually talk like this, but it seemed appropriate for the start with the title of the video. Hey guys, thanks for checking this video out. My name is Dan C. Bearded, and I have used heat on my beard almost every single day for the last four to five years, and my beard is very healthy. Watch this. Mm-hmm, that one's for free. Next one we gotta pay for. You've probably heard somebody say, heat will damage your beard. Well, they are wrong. They are likely in one of two camps. One, they're just repeating something that they've heard over and over again, and they have no substance behind the statement. Or number two, they have actually tried heat on their beard and they used it incorrectly and did not like the results. The statement should read, heat can damage your beard when done incorrectly. I will raise this, I will up the ante to you and say that heat can actually be beneficial to your beard and any beard out there. Now, of course, it's a personal preference thing. I'm not telling you you have to use heat. I'm not telling you it's the best thing that's out there. But I do want to put those myths down that say it will kill your beard. Again, almost every day. There's once in a great while where I have just a straight up lazy day where I do not do my beard in the morning. I still do oil. I still comb it. But I don't use heat or anything else. But that's pretty rare and it's not because of any like health benefits. It's just because I'm laying around the house. I don't have to film. I don't have to go anywhere. And I just kind of want to be lazy that day, right? We all have those days. Maybe I'm editing. Maybe I'm working on schoolwork or whatever the case may be. But let's break it down with the absolute basics. And I'm going to link in the description below a video of me using heat on my beard, using a blow dryer and a heated brush with the method that I still use. It's probably, I don't know, six months old or so. It's still the same method that I use every single morning. So you guys can see it for yourself. I thought about doing this one in the bathroom, but I thought it would be better delivered down here with the quality so you guys can hear exactly what I'm talking about and really kind of break it down. Okay, the basics. Let's go over it. Number one, you should have your beard damp, but not dripping. When you get out of the shower, dry your beard, pat dry with a towel, whatever method you have, damp, but not dripping. Number two, apply beard oil to your beard. This is extremely important and one thing that always baffles me where there's a lot of people that don't know this or believe the opposite, where they say do not use oil before heat. No, 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 no. The most important thing is you need oil on your beard before using heat, it acts as a protectant. It is going to cover and coat that beard and protect it from the heat. Allow the heat to do its job, but if you do not have that oil on there, it's going to be causing damage, right? Just think about a pan. If you're gonna cook some steak in there, you're gonna throw some oil on there first, otherwise it's gonna to burn to the pan. But what happens when you add oil? That burning does not occur when you're doing it correctly, right? Everything's about doing it correctly. So step two is add oil to your beard, the appropriate amount. Step three, also very important, wait five minutes. The reason why you're doing that is that oil is going to partially absorb into the hairs and start to protect them from within and from the outside, and it just allows it to do its job. It settles in there, the moisture gets locked in, that oil is gonna be there ready to protect it. And then step number four, apply your heat, but here's a couple of little tidbits that we have with it. Not too hot, not too long, and not too direct. And we're gonna get into the specifics of all of those. Okay, not too hot. Do not use any temperature, my recommendation, over 365 degrees. Keep that in mind. I've talked about that on the channel before with some more detailed videos, but I think this one will get out more to the masses. 365, think about that year rule. That is kind of the threshold where we start to get in trouble with damage when you go above that. 420 everybody's hair will be damaged no matter what. That is like the absolute no zone, but I don't really see a situation where you need to go over 365. Now, a couple things to note, if you are using a heated brush like this, most of them have the temperature controls, so you know exactly where your temperature is. I run my Aberlite Pro at 320 degrees, and nothing in this video is sponsored. They, as always, they don't know I'm making this video. This is just what I use every day. 320 is where I keep it, but you can go up to 360, 365. I do not recommend going above that. When you use a blow dryer, do not, and this is one of my next points, do not use it on high heat. I recommend using it on the medium heat setting and the medium speed. So let's see if this will pick it up here. So when you have on here, you have one spot that has for like very hot, medium, and then cold. And then you have the other spot that has off, medium, and then like really fast. 
Use it on the medium and medium, and that's gonna give you that right spot. Most hair dryers are not going to exceed on those settings anywhere near the 360, and you're gonna be good. And then I said not too direct, right? A blow dryer is the least direct because you're keeping it away from your beard and letting the air do the work. A heated brush is the next level of direct, but if you notice, you have the teeth here, so it's not the exact heating mechanism. When you get in there, there's no like metal heating elements that are right there and really pushing on the beard. You have a little bit of cushion, a little bit of protection that, that comes in here, and even if you do see those little spots that have it, it's usually something that has a like a ceramic layer or something that's gonna be good to the beard, and we get to control the temperature. Remember, heated brush, controlled temperature. One thing you do not ever want to use on your beard would be a flat iron, right? This is very different. Women use it on their head hair. They'll even tell you it's probably not the best thing, but our head hair is very different than our beard hairs. Do not use a flat iron or a heated brush. And let me see, I'm gonna see if I can work some magic and put something up over here. There are heated brushes that are essentially flat irons. They're very cheap. And then what they do is it just puts a little plastic guard over there that looks like horizontal teeth. Those are terrible. Do not use those on your beard. This is just way too direct. And I think it's gonna give it too straight of a, a look for the hairs. You still wanna, like I used heat this morning, of course, but I still have a little bit of texture. If you get in there, there's still some curly cues. There's still some zigzags and whoop whoops. This will just simply straighten your hair like very thin, straight head hair. We don't want that. And it is mandatory though, if you have these, it's like when you're, when you're grilling, you do have to click them. And that would just be annoying in the morning to my family, me getting ready. And I, it's just that manly urge where I don't know what it is, but you gotta click them. We do not want to use a flat iron at all. Now, the last bit of advice I would give, no matter what heat you're using, and they actually have designed tools for this, but I haven't gone that far. One huge thing is you want to be able to get a blow dryer, especially that has the cold shot button, switch it to the cold setting, hold down. And there's people I know that didn't know that they're like, man, I pressed the button and it didn't do anything to use the proper cold shot. You do need to hold it down because to sum up another video that I have, if you guys look up like Dancy bearded glass transitional phase, I'll add it in the description as well. If I can remember, got it. Essentially what you're doing is your hair is in a, a pretty much solid like state right now. When you get it to the appropriate level of heat, it is then transitioning into like a liquid glass like physical state. And then once you go with that cold shot, it locks it back into that solid state in whichever way you molded it. It's the same way you blow glass or create glass. That cold shot is very, very powerful to be able to lock that in. I now use a cold shot even after using a heated brush. It's that useful and it just gives you that little extra layer of protection there okay those are those basics i'm going to grab myself my thoughts together check my notes see if i missed anything come back to you guys for a conclusion to wrap this up one thing that i know many people will ask and have asked is what about balm butter and wax where does that go in right we have oil before the heat what about those solid like products this one is a personal preference there's no huge benefit or kind of downfall to either I personally recommend using them after the heat. I believe that you don't really want to cook those butters. They're gonna lose some of their properties in your beard, whether it's the butters in the balm, the butters in the butter, or even the beeswax when we get into higher concentrations of products like, like beard wax. I recommend using those solid products afterwards, but some people swear by using it before and I cannot think of and have not found any reason to say that that is a bad thing. The only thing to consider is if you're using something like a heated brush, it's gonna get much more gooked and kind of like nasty when you're using those solid products beforehand and you're gonna need to wash this thing dang near every single day. For me, when it's only oil, I wash it every couple of weeks. When it looks like it or it starts to smell like it, then I start to wash it. Could I up my frequency? Yeah, I probably should. Now that I'm saying this, if I asked Sam, she would say, yeah, wash it more. But once you use that butter and balm, you're going to have to really uptick that. Okay. Now, the only other kind of thing that I want to make sure we know, and I didn't demonstrate and show in this video is make sure you are not keeping that heat on your beard too long. And a lot has to do with how fast or how slow you're going through your beard. If you go through too fast, you're not going to do anything, right? We know the equation heat 
plus tension equals direction. If we want to get it in a direction we would like, we have the heat, but we also need tension. So if it's too fast, you're losing that tension and it's not going to affect it. Now, if it's too slow and you're leaving it on there, that's going to be too direct, right? If you get that blow dryer and you're just blasting one spot, that's going to be too direct of heat. So you got to find that happy medium in a lot of its trial and error. But again, I will link that demonstration video where I use a blow dryer and a heated brush and it'll show you guys the speed. I would say the only difference is maybe I have slowed down just a bit since that video. That's something I realized like, okay, I can slow down on that. And that's really helped out. But a lot of it's just trying it out, seeing what feels like too much, seeing what feels like too little. But I will say as you experiment, as you try these things, your beard is very resilient. If you are doing it once a day, I do not recommend heat more than once a day. You will just have one shot to practice. Your beard will be fine as long as you're falling within these rules. And even again, on that too long or too slow, you have a little bit of wiggle room to play with. And that's where it gets fun to figure out what you like and what you look for. So. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Let me know your questions down below. Again, this is for people that are just starting out that want to use heat on their beard. And this is years of experience, right? I've had videos probably three years old where I used heated brushes and I've learned stuff since then. Those videos are still up, but there may be things that I don't exactly do anymore or maybe I don't even believe experience is the greatest teacher and this is my most accurate and up-to-date information for where I'm at right now. Let me know your thoughts. Cannot wait to read those comments, you guys. Thank you for watching. I don't even think I invited anybody yet. If you could, hit a thumbs up if you made it this far. Shout out to you. And then also, if you're not subscribed, it would mean a lot to me. And if you're looking for information on heat in your beard, I do think this channel is going to be beneficial to you. And hey, it's free. It costs you absolutely nothing to hit that subscribe button. Thank you, guys. Dancy Bearded. Stay bearded and stay positive.